In this video, we're going to be talking about the manifold pressure gauge. Not all airplanes have it, but a lot of them do, especially those with constant speed propellers. Well, what is it? How does it work? What does it mean to us? Let's understand the physics of it. Okay, well, let's start with something it says on this gauge. We know this is measuring manifold pressure, whatever that is. And it says back here, inches of mercury absolute. Well, inches of mercury is something we need to understand and absolute is something else we need to understand. All right, let's start with the easy one, inches of mercury. Well, you may not understand what that is, but you probably are familiar with it as a pilot because your altimeter, we've learned, we've learned to deal with something. Um, uh, the Colesman window, the pressure setting on the altimeter. The Colesman window shows you these numbers and they're oddly enough in the same range as this one's showing. So this one's showing about 29.91 what? Inches of mercury. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, let's look at the physics of what that means. All right, let's, we're gonna do an experiment. We're gonna be at sea level. We're gonna have a dish full of mercury. Okay, this is full of mercury, which is a liquid at room temperature. A dish full of mercury. We're gonna take a long glass tube and just stick in there. Okay, long glass tube. Stick it in that dish where it can, where the mercury can flow into it. All right, and it'll look just like that. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cap the end of it off and it'll still look like that. But then we're gonna pull a vacuum on it. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna hook up a vacuum pump and suck all the air out of out of this tube, every bit of it, until there's no air at all in this tube. And what's gonna happen? The mercury is gonna rise. It's gonna rise up to a specific level. Okay? Doesn't matter about the vacuum pump. It's gonna rise up to a specific level. Now as pilots, we walk over to our airplane because it's always going to be nearby. And we go to our altimeter. We call, we get on the radio and call the local AWOS and we get an altimeter setting of 2991, just like this, 29.91. Okay, so AWOS gave us a 29.91 inches of mercury inches hg okay 2991 we're at sea level when we do this experiment so we go to our altimeter wrote set the colesman window to 2991 and we look over at our at our little gauge our little uh, manometer here the vacuum pump has pulled all the air out of it it stopped we close a little valve here and we take a tape measure and we measure this. We measure the height between this fluid at the base and this fluid at the top. And what we're seeing is 29.91 inches. Isn't that something? So what did we just do? What did we just measure? Well, what we measured is, what we measured is, this, this is a way to measure atmospheric pressure. So atmospheric pressure exists everywhere. It exists in the room when I'm making this video. It exists around my hands right now. It exists inside and outside this pen. But we don't even think about it. We just think there's no pressure. We say, you know, the room is not pressurized. We walk outside, that's certainly not pressurized, but of course it is. We just don't notice it. It's, it's, our, it's the ambient air, it's the atmospheric pressure. We can't sense it. We can only sense big changes in it as people. Well, this is a device that shows us how much pressure exists where we at, we are at. So this experiment's done at sea level. What we're seeing is the pressure in the atmosphere, which is pushing in all directions. Remember, all directions. Pressure goes everywhere. These little arrows are indicating the direction of force from this pressure. Well, this all can't. All these arrows they, they all cancel each other out, but whenever you have pressure against this fluid, well, this fluid has some place to go. That doesn't just 
push it out of the out of the the, the dish here because it's all even but it's not even when we pull a vacuum on this when we pull a vacuum on it we've pulled all the air out that air remember was pressurized too so that air the reason it wouldn't go up the tube before is because there was pressurized air in it pressurized at atmospheric pressure but when we pull the vacuum that air is no longer there there's nothing there's nothing pressurized anymore and so it pushes right out the tube and it goes to 29.91 inches. Now, you might think, well, that just that just shows you how much vacuum you pulled on it, but actually that's not right. Uh, it doesn't matter how much, it, well, it matters that you pull all the air out and this will read exactly what atmospheric pressure is. If the pressure changes a few hours later, if it goes up, and you call the AWOS and it goes up to 30.03, you'll see this change also. This will rise to 30.03 because the atmospheric pressure increased, pushed harder on this fluid and pushed the mercury up that far. That's what's going on. That's what that number means, okay? So we're used to that in an altimeter. Now, if we go back to our airplane, now that we understand that, you may notice that the pressure, that the manifold pressure your engine is off, the manifold pressure also reads the same thing. Well, this is not quite right, this is a little low. But you go to your manifold pressure gauge and you notice that it reads about 2991 as well. Isn't that something? Well, of course it does because it's reading manifold pressure and manifold. the manifold, the intake manifold of the engine is connected. It's, it's the same pressure as the atmospheric pressure, okay? So let's talk about what an intake manifold is. A lot of people probably know this. If you're a pilot, you probably already have a fair understanding of this, but let's go into the details. All right, in, in an engine, we're gonna just draw one cylinder. We have a cylinder with a piston that runs inside of it. Okay, this piston has multiple rings, it has a wrist pin, we have a connecting rod that comes down here to the crankshaft. Crankshaft is here, and, and then uh, we have a crank pin that rotates around the crankshaft center like that. Basically like that. As this rotates around, drives the piston up and down, right? On top of the cylinder is a cylinder head It'll have an exhaust valve, an intake valve. Let's draw an intake valve that's open and an exhaust valve that's closed. Okay. So exhaust would go this way to the exhaust pipes, intake goes this way. All right, so this intake valve is open that's where, that's where whenever the piston pulls down, it pulls air into the cylinder. The strokes of the engine are intake, piston goes down, compression stroke, it com the intake valve closes and seals it off, then it compresses all that air. Well, it's got fuel in it, right? It compresses air and fuel, the spark plug fires, ignites the air and fuel, explodes, push the piston, piston down in the power stroke, and then it rolls right back around the exhaust valve opens and it blows the exhaust out on the exhaust stroke and it comes back down to do the intake again. That's, a, that's on a four stroke engine. Okay, we're only gonna be looking at the intake stroke. That's what we're interested in. On the intake stroke, you have an open intake valve. Air and fuel are gonna flow into it. All right, it's gonna flow around the valve that's open into the cylinder because the piston pulled down, sucking air in. Now, where'd that air come from? Well, it came from a, a pipe connected to the intake port. This pipe would be called the intake manifold. At the end of that somewhere is another device. I'm just gonna draw this like a little pipe running through it. The carburetor, okay? And in front of the carburetor somewhere, is a filter, an air filter. All right, so air, air flows through the filter 
through whatever piping connects to the carburetor, through the carburetor, leaves the carburetor with fuel in it. Let's draw some fuel going in here. So fuel gets in here, gets, gets mixed with the air, and then goes through the intake manifold to the head, through the intake valve, and into the cylinder. Okay, this is happening really fast. Okay, one big thing that we need to, need to recognize in the carburetor is there is a valve, a butterfly valve, called the throttle valve. Okay, that throttle valve here, and it, and it swings this way, like this. Okay, if you were to if you were to look straight up at it, if you were to look look down the pipe at it, it would do this. It would it would open, close, open, close. All right, sorry, that's open. Close, open. So if it was open, we would draw it in dashed lines like this. And it rotates this direction. Okay? Just like that. Okay, so at idle, when you go to start your engine, remember we have an airplane sitting there at sea level. We just did this experiment. We noticed that our altimeter, we noticed that this read 29.91 inches. We noticed our altimeter is at 29.91, and we noticed that our manifold pressure is also at 29.91. So that manifold pressure is being read from right here, somewhere about right here. It's on the, in the intake manifold. That's probably coming from the carburetor. But we got a gauge here, manifold pressure. Okay, so it's reading like that, pretty high. You go to start your engine. Where's that throttle valve? It's closed. It's got a little hole in it. It's either cracked open slightly and it won't close all the way, or it's got a hole or a couple of holes drilled into it. And what that does is it allows only a tiny amount of air, just enough air to mix with just enough fuel to, in, to run the engine at idle and no more. And only idle at a certain RPM. So it's metered so that when that thing is closed, say, let's say your engine idles at 700 RPM. The reason it doesn't idle at 1200 or 1500 or 200 is because there's just enough air going through here and mix with just enough fuel to have just enough combustion in the cylinders to run it at that speed. That valve right there is what regulates the speed of your engine, literally the power of your engine, which also regulates the speed, at least, at least a basic engine just idling. All right, so when you get in your airplane and push the throttle forward or you push a lever or you push the, the cable, when you throttle it up and the engine goes well, what you're doing, you're just pushing a cable that's connected to an arm that opens that valve. It's closed and it opens it. And by opening it, all you're doing is you're allowing more air to flow through here. The carburetor mixes more fuel with that air and you get more power in the cylinders. But how is this happening? Well, the air doesn't just flow through, it gets pulled through by the piston. So when the piston comes down on the intake stroke, you have an open intake valve and the piston comes down really fast and it sucks, it pulls, it sucks air in. It actually pulls pretty hard, it idles. See, we have a closed valve here with tiny holes. We're talking real small, like small that this pin would, this pin head is probably bigger than the holes. Very, very small. So a very small amount of air is getting through here so that piston, as you can imagine, as it pulls, is pulling pretty hard. It's sucking really hard, and you can hear it. If you're around this valve, if you could open the, the ports up and listen to this valve, it's sucking really hard on it. If you could use your hand instead of the valve, it would hurt. It would pull your hand really hard. So you can imagine we, when we started this, before we started this engine, we noticed the manifold pressure gauge here open atmosphere through a little tiny hole, but still open, it was reading the same pressure as atmospheric pressure. But when we started it, now the piston is pulling down and sucking, it's pulling the pressure of the atmosphere down, uh, down it, because of the suction, 
and so the manifold pressure gauge decreases. So this is what it looks like maybe when it's running or, or more likely when it's sitting. And when you start it, it pulls it way down here, below 10 even, pulls it way down because it's got a high vacuum on it and it can't, it's pulled the pressure that the atmosphere exerts on this whole system way down, okay? But then you go to, then you go to, to run the engine up or you go to take off and you push the throttle in and then the engine revs up and starts making all kinds of power. Well, what you've done is you've opened the throttle up and now when that piston comes down for a breath, instead of sucking real hard, it's got an open, it's got an open valve and a pretty free air filter. So it just, it just breathes. It just, the air, instead of just, instead of suction and a little bit of air flowing, the air just breathes in real fast and it doesn't develop a lot of vacuum. Therefore, the manifold pressure does not suck down. Instead, when you open the throttle up, the manifold pressure goes up. So your gauge here, your gauge here, as you, as you increase your throttle, the gauge will open up, it, it, it will go up. And so, you're, so now you're taking off and we're making a lot of power and we got real high manifold pressure and you start climbing, you're climbing at a thousand feet a minute. And let's assume this is a fixed pitch propeller. You're climbing at a thousand feet a minute and, and, uh, and you start noticing every thousand feet you look at your manifold pressure gauge and something's happening. About every thousand feet, you, the needle goes down an, an inch, an, one inch of uh, mercury. And another thousand feet and it goes down. Another thousand, it goes down. Well, that's because that's because approximately you lose, uh, and you might remember this from the Colesman window, for every one inch of mercury of pressure change, it's about a thousand feet. So as you climb a thousand feet, your manifold pressure goes down. And that's if you keep it at wide open throttle. That's if you keep the throttle shoved all the way forward and you're making full power. So, so that means that there's less pressure in the atmosphere uh, to go into your engine. Less pressure means there's less, there's actually less air that can flow through your carburetor, which will pick up less fuel, when it's, at least when it's leaned correctly. Um, and that means there will be less power. So the manifold pressure gauge is really an indication of how much power your engine is making. It's a direct indication of how much pressure is in the intake manifold. But what, you're, what this is telling you is what kind of power the engine is producing. So when you climb up 10,000 feet, you're gonna be at wide open throttle, you're gonna be right here, some, something like that. And that tells you that's not, you're not making very much power because there's not much power to be had. There's not enough air up there to mix with the fuel that you have to make pressure, to make a, a lot of power. So, so that's really what it's all about. So when you're in a constant speed, now in a fixed pitch propeller, you're used to just running based on RPMs. And if you have, so you just, you just use the throttle to control engine speed. But in a constant speed prop, you use the propeller lever to set engine speed. It sets the speed of the propeller, which drives the speed of the engine. And then you set your, but you set your power, your engine power with manifold pressure. And that's what, and that's how, how that works. So when you set, let's say, uh, you know, a, a, somebody might say, well, I was, how fast were you flying? What power setting? And they say 25 squared, 25 squared, or anyway, 25 squared. What does that mean? That means I set my manifold pressure at 25 inches of mercury, and I set my engine speed at 2,500 RPM. So 25 inches of mercury and 2,500 RPM. So this is with the prop. You set this with a prop lever and you set this with a throttle. Now, in the, my example of climbing up real high, you climb up to 10,000 feet, you can't, on most engines, uh, well, you wouldn't be able to. At 10,000 feet, you wouldn't be able to run at 25 squared. 
because you don't have that much pressure in the atmosphere. So you're gonna be at a lot lower power setting. And, uh, and what that squared, what that means when people say that is if they do 23 squared, you see it's 25, 23 inches of mercury on the manifold pressure adjusted by the throttle and 2300 RPM. And there's other reasons for that, but, uh, but that's what that stuff means, okay? Manifold pressure, inches of mercury, inches of mercury are, is telling you the pressure, if you measured it with a mercury device like this, the pressure that, that would exert a specific rise in inches of mercury. It's coming from your man, intake manifold. It's being driven by pulling the pressure that's available in the atmosphere which is an absolute pressure, not a gauge pressure. So when we talk about when we talk about pressure, when we see a pressure gauge like this, this is we're only if we say this is 20 something's 20 psi or zero, like this gauge reads zero, that doesn't mean there's no pressure in the atmosphere where that gauge is. That just means there's no pressure at this port relative to the air around it. Okay, but in the air around it, we already know there's pressure. So we don't deal with that. That's, that's called gauge pressure. Now, this is also a gauge, but uh, it's called gauge pressure. This is called, we measure this in absolute pressure. That's why it even says on your gauge, absolute. Letting you know that this is not just talking about some relative pressure, but absolute pressure. So the throttle on the engine, the throttle lever controls the throttle valve, which determines how much resistance is in the intake system. The more resistance here, the more suction from the piston occurs, and the more it pulls your manifold pressure down. It actually pulls the available, uh, the available air pressure from the atmosphere down, giving you lower power. And it, it, when you're idling, it's really low. Uh, when you're running the engine really fast and you have the throttle back, like when you're descending at a, at a high engine speed, you get the lowest amount of, of amount of manifold pressure because it's a really high vacuum. That means it's pulling, it's, it's pulling really hard, but the throttle plate is cutting it off. So when you push the throttle forward, open it up, you're getting more of the atmospheric pressure in there to push the air into the, into the combustion chamber and produce power. That's what it means when we look at a manifold pressure gauge. So again, real quick, on a constant speed propeller, you set your you set the speed of the engine with, uh, with the prop lever. That's your speed. You set the power and you measure power by manifold pressure. And you do that with the throttle. That's all there is to it.